I have been so freaking stupidly addicted to this game in the last week. I've played it more than any other game. I've never had a game surprise me in the sense of I honestly thought I was going to hate it before I started playing it. And it's so hard to bounce back from that, to go into a game thinking I'm going to hate this game and end up not only liking it, but loving it and playing it nonstop. And if you follow my channel and if you've known me for a while, this might surprise you because I've been very outspoken about hating games like this in the past. But for some reason that I'm going to try and explain to you today, I love and am so addicted to Dragon Quest Builders. This is by far my favorite Switch game of 2018 so far. A reason why a lot of you might be surprised I like this game is because, well, A, I've never really talked about a game like this before other than Minecraft. To which I've been very open with, I don't like Minecraft. It's okay if you do, I'm not hating on the game. In fact, I think it's a great game, especially for young minds to get creative in. But that's not really what I'm about. I don't really like crafting, I don't like mining materials, I don't like the game. There's oh so much to the game that I've never really been bothered to learn, and it's just slow for me. It's slow and boring and kind of just monotonous, if that's how you pronounce that word, which I'm, I'm hoping it is. But here's what Dragon Quest Builders does. Right from the start, it simplifies it. It takes it down just to the bare necessities of a crafting game. Picks out everything fun about that concept and gives you only that. Before I get too far into this review, I'm gonna give you my hook. The thing that really sold me on the game once I realized what the game was all about. And that's, imagine if Link to the Past and The Sims had a baby and that baby grew up to be Minecraft but had all of the traits of Link to the Past and The Sims. And here's what I mean by that. The combat, and when you go out on adventure, it's very much like Zelda, it's very much like Link to the Past. When you go out into the wild, you face a lot of creatures from the Dragon Quest universe, but it's the way you fight them in this game that reminds me of Zelda. By just simply slashing your sword. You can slash your sword, or you can hit your hammer, or you can charge up your attack and do a spin attack. Just like Link, granted not in Link to the Past, but you know. Also, you very much sound like Link when you swing your sword and when you take damage. And a lot of the sound effects used in the game, I swear, are repurposed from other Zelda games. There are definitely similarities in the combat, but it's also that feeling of going out and exploring. And it's not quite the same, whereas in Zelda, you go out to explore and find new places and then meet new NPC characters and go on new adventures. In Dragon Quest Builders, you leave your base to go and craft, go and get materials, sometimes find another person to join your settlement, but it's always with the goal of coming back, coming back to your settlement and rebuilding. And that's where the Sims side of things come in when you go back to the base and you start building it. As you progress, more and more settlers will come and join your base and start giving you quests. Those settlers need somewhere to live. And then the settlers that join will have their own traits. Maybe they'll be a cook, maybe they'll be a blacksmith. They'll ask you to build certain things for them, like an armory or a kitchen. And that's when you find yourself building up this little settlement, building rooms, and it feels a lot like The Sims and trying to keep these people happy. I built all of this. I literally started with nothing and I built this entire place. So let me give you a little tour before we uh, continue on. So this was the first room uh, initially we were sleeping in when there was just like two of us. Uh, so this is how I build things with this thing here. You can build a whole bunch of different stuff and you click on something. It'll tell you what materials you need. And then this is like the furnace, which you build like things out of iron and stuff like that. You can build armor. You don't level up in this game. You just build better equipment like I'm wearing right now. And I built some more rooms. This is a room just for one chick because she wanted her own room. Kind of particular if you ask me. There's like a bunch of people here. I don't see why she gets her own room, but it's whatever. She never sleeps in there. Which is kind of annoying. She ends up sleeping wherever she wants anyway. That's an armory. This is the world chest. So every time I find anything out in the world, it goes straight here, which is pretty cool. So you don't maximize your inventory when you're out. Now, this is my room. I made it fancy AF. I have a little, I have the fanciest bed in the place. It ain't just a straw mattress. You know, I need to put some plants in here. I haven't done that yet. I could do that right now, actually. No, screw it. I don't care. And then there's like a kitchen over here where you make your food. And this is what heals you. So right now I'm actually kind of hungry. You can see that hunger meter in the top left. We'll eat a fried egg. And none of it's too hard. They give you blueprints of the things they want you to build. And it's your job to find those things, craft those things to finish rooms. 
Between the combat, the crafting, and the actual finding of the materials, you can do it all at your own pace and your own leisure in any order you want. As soon as something gets a little boring and you want to do something else, you can go and do that something else. An incentive to keep building your base up is every now and then along the quest line, your base will get attacked and you and some of the fellow settlers have to defend it from waves of enemies in a final boss fight. Here's some points I want to touch on of things I really love about the game. You don't level up. Instead, you build your own armor and your own weapons and your own shields. And initially you do that out of what you have at hand. And as you go and you find things like steel, you can build stronger weapons and stronger armor. And then you can go back and you can take down those enemies you couldn't take down before. Or you can build a stronger hammer and you can go out and you can mine new materials and come back and make even stronger things. Something I like about the going out and finding materials is everything you touch in this world, everything you do stays exactly that way. Whether it's killing an enemy or attacking a cliff face and mining away at it to get some resources, and no matter how many times you leave and come back and leave and come back, it'll stay exactly the same way. Resources you haven't picked up will stay exactly where they are. Things you have built in any of the islands will stay exactly where you've built them. And there are so many different resources you can find. I'm always blown away every time I find something new because it seems to never end. You have to craft your own heels and craft your own food because you get hungry while you're building and you have to eat. There are a lot of levels to this game, but it's all fairly simple once you get the hang of it and it's all fun. There isn't anything in the game that I ever saw as a chore. There isn't anything that ever got slow or boring or I didn't want to do. Everything I've told you so far, everything I've shown you so far, everything I've explained and my adventure, that was all chapter one. You start that settlement, you build that settlement up, you slowly unlock those three teleporters that let you go to these different islands and once you conquer an island and you become as strong as you can and get everything that you need and keep coming back and building up that first settlement and that all took place over about 20-25 hours of my playthrough and then I beat what I thought was a final boss and I ended up unlocking chapter two, which I didn't even realize I was on chapter one that whole time. And then you go out and you start again in a new world, in a new place with a new settlement, and you have to help them build back up. And sometimes in games that do that, I get annoyed. I just built this settlement back here. I have my home, I have my people that I like, I have my worlds that I'm accustomed to, now I have to start again. But I actually love it in this game because I realized that's why it's so fun. That's why it's so fast paced, because if they had made it so you only build up one settlement, that would stretch that gameplay out over 60 hours, and it wouldn't be that jam packed full of fun. You would spend so much longer in every area grinding to get certain materials to build certain things. Starting again in this game actually isn't a bad thing, because just about when you're done and you start thinking, well, where do I go now? You go to a new place with new creatures, new materials, and a different environment. The things that you're used to farming and getting a lot of, are now a little bit more scarce and the things that you could barely find before are much more available to you in the environment which means you'll be crafting different things, you'll be making different things. And as soon as you start the second chapter, for example, you get access to a bunch of things you couldn't build before, like better beds, for example. I had all my guys sleeping on these little straw mattresses in my first place, and in the second chapter, I could finally build them a good bed. It saves on a different file slot, so you can go back to that first chapter and pick up right where you left off if you really do want to keep living in that world or building your town up some more. Nintendo asked me if I wanted to review this game. I don't like saying no to Nintendo. I've never said no. Every time they've come to me with, do you want to review this or do you want to do this? I say yes, it's Nintendo. I'm not going to say no. That doesn't mean I'm going to say positive things about it, like Minecraft. Minecraft is one of the first things they ever gave me to review. In fact, they actually invited me out to Nintendo headquarters in Seattle to play Minecraft for Wii U before it had come out. It was one of the first cool things that happened to me on YouTube. And I remember my email back to them was, I don't like Minecraft, you might want to pick someone else. And they said, no, it's fine, come by and try it out. And I was open about that. I told you guys that I didn't like Minecraft. I also told you guys I didn't like Xenoblade that much. I'm not the kind of guy that just stands up here and says, hey, this game is great just because I was given a code for it. I don't have to do that. In fact, it's my responsibility not to do that. So if you are out there thinking, I don't like crafting games, I don't like building games, I don't like things like that, you can actually play the demo. You can download the demo on the Switch. The first time I saw this game, my buddy 8-Bit Eric was live streaming it and both RGT85 and myself jumped into that live stream and we both said, dude, this game looks 
bad. This game looks so boring. We said it in his stream. Then I started playing it and fell in love with it. And then Sean was like, you are as insane as Eric because Eric loved it as well. So RGT said, screw it, I'll download that demo. He went out and bought the game the next day. So whether you think you'll love or hate this game, try out that demo for yourself and see if you like it. Again, for me, it really is that combination of those three things because you spend an equal amount of time on combat, an equal amount of time building sim style, and an equal amount of time out there crafting and finding materials. It is split so evenly and each one is so fun. I love Sims. I love Zelda. I hate Minecraft. But they come together so well. Not to mention this whole game is wrapped up in a Dragon Quest skin. I haven't touched on that this entire video. And it's because it's so far removed from any other Dragon Quest game. But there is that. And I do love the enemies and sprites in Dragon Quest. They're adorable. It runs and looks great whether you're playing it on the TV or on the portable mode. But just playing it portable, a game like this, it's perfect. Playing this on its own, lying down in bed just with the tablet is more than engaging enough. But it's also a game that you can watch TV while you play. While you watch Breaking Bad or the 5 o'clock news, whatever it is you want to do, this game is so nice to have portable. As soon as this live stream is done, I'm going to be filming a video about this game. Because um, I am addicted to it. And honestly, that might be what I call the video. I am addicted to this one Switch game lately. <laughs> People are going to call that clickbait, but it's it's true. This is literally all I've been playing. That's the end of my review. I just, I was so surprised by this game and I instantly have so much love for it. As I said, I thought I was going to hate it going into it. I just ended up loving it. What do you guys think? Have you played this game on Switch or before? Do you love it? Let us know down below. Back up my opinion. Tell these Minecraft haters that they might love builders. Or if you have played it and you hate it, you can tell us that down below as well. Remember to like this video. Leave that comment down below. Subscribe because we become best friends. And I will see you guys as soon as I can. Now I'm going to go edit this video. Get it up.